to say you have a kid who's, I don't know, like a hundred and hundred and like 10 pounds or something. And he, he's in his, he's growing, he's a skinny kid. And you start putting him on like super, I don't know, like one and a half grams per pound or something versus a normal kid who's like, I don't know, like half a gram per pound because he's getting so many carbs and like fats from like a standard Western diet. Like, what do you think the disparity in height could be? Is it like one or two inches or is it like multiple inches or what do you well, think? I have my old diet from when I was uh, one years old. It's right here. What? In the closet. It's, in, it's in Dutch. Yeah, my mom wrote it down. Wow, it's my God. all carbs, all carbs, oatmeal, bread, uh, apples, bananas. There's no team, no vegetables. It's all carbs. Dude, Makes they, me wonder. Yeah, I had to sit down with my parents. It's like, what the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? What have you been doing to me? You know, I wonder you know, what the, you know, I think Leo, you might've made a video on this, but the difference in like, ultimately what you reach height wise if you had like a protein deficient diet versus if you were like eating like a bodybuilder i guess when you're like a teenager it well, matters more than your genetics within a country so within yeah. like europeans your genetics matter less than your protein amount generally not for everybody but for most people so let's just say you have a kid who's i don't know like 100 and 110 pounds or something and he he's in his he's growing he's a skinny kid and you start putting him on like super i don't know like one and a half grams per pound or something versus a normal kid who's like i don't know like half a gram per pound because he's getting so many carbs and like fats from like a standard western diet like what do you think the disparity in height could be is it like one or two inches or is it like multiple inches or what do you well, think the, we can we can analyze them well, there's two ways there's, there's a lot of statistical analysis right now around different countries so some countries consume less protein so you can see uh, the differences there but let's yeah. take an extreme example what european height used to be so the tallest europeans are now the dutch steve's country and i think mm -hmm. you guys are around six feet or six one yeah or so. i'm about this much shorter than everybody oh, else <laughs> you're six one to us but but the point is in, in 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 the netherlands they have an average height of around six one their historical average 150 years ago when they had less protein and were eating more carbohydrates or 200 years ago was five eight wow so you're talking about five six inches the difference between why are so many middle easterners so short or in india for example low protein also not just their genetics especially india so you can see it here in Thailand within one generation from the people that grew up with a low protein environment and then got rich, right? Because some people get rich here within one generation quite mm -hmm. fast if they find the right business. And then they feed their kids a high protein diet. They're literally five inches taller. One yeah, thing, I'm, I'm, it's insane. I'm you see, these are my parents and they're like, they're like this high. What the hell happened here? You know, one it's thing a big that difference. I've been jealous of is the access of information of the current teenage generation versus yeah. us. So like it's in hindsight, it's almost hard to not be like slightly annoyed at your parents for not like knowing this shit. But at the same time, like why would they, you know, dig into this kind of literature or even know it exists or even think about it? Cause they've been told by the food pyramid that you learn in school, like this is the correct way to yeah. eat. So the people nowadays, you have like biohackers who are like fucking 14 who are like trying to maximize their DHT production for dick length and like max their <laughs> protein intake for like height and stuff. Like this is info I would have liked to have back in the day. Like who knows? Yeah, that's why we're all giving back. back, right? That's why all yeah. the stuff we had to figure out like 15 years too late, we're now giving back through the YouTube channel. Yeah, That's all the stuff on my channel about like hardcore bodybuilding and stuff. I had to piece together the information was not there and now we all try to give back to at least prevent the next generation from making similar mistakes or learning things early like you're way ahead of my generation you know mm -hmm. business wise because you had access to social media from the beginning and me and leo were kind of like you know it's a, maybe a little bit reluctant to start social media and and where in reality if if we had access to social media from the age of 15 then i, I think we would have been way ahead I'm basically frightened by TikTok. I still can't use <laughs> it. it the, just the yeah. word and Snapchat really scares me as well. These things are. But I'm I, banned I on TikTok something. right now. When I was Again? 15, oh, I yeah. tried to biohack. I tried to be this generation. I went and x-rayed my bones and I found out the growth um, uh, plates, supposedly. The growth. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, nice. had closed. So I, I x-rayed it, but I didn't know at the time that it's not so much of a dichotomy. Some things are still growing. But I tried. I was it's a year or two late because of estrogen peaking, because nobody told me you should control your estrogen. 
I also used to ask my my father for some interventions, and they would just say no. <laughs> I yes, couldn't do it. So imagine going at like fourteen, be like, "Can I have an aromatase inhibitor to your?" Yeah. Fucking <laughs> well, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do. Uh, when I was like twenty four, when I broke my leg, I, I called the doctor. Said, "Listen, I I found all these studies about growth hormone um, helping with bone healing." So I sent him all the papers. He said, "They were probably like." He's probably like, shut the fuck up, you idiot. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what do you know what you're talking about? And then I just started looking around in the bodybuilding community. And then I realized how expensive it was. I was like, dude, I can't afford this. Mm. Yeah, I mean, so. that's how I got into bodybuilding. I was never bodybuilder, never bodybuilder in my life. Only studied it to learn how they biohack. Basically, I didn't know there was no word for biohacking at the time. Yeah. But these were right. people who did everything to their bodies, unlike powerlifters or arm wrestlers, which I was more into. So you could see how the nutrition works in the you know the highest levels, and you can see how the drugs work. So that's what interested me in it, honestly. I learned. Yeah, it's, it's one of the earliest biohackers available. Right, it's, it's a little bit stuck in its place. We're trying to change it. Uh, slow and steadily but um yeah i think the biohacking community is way ahead of the bodybuilding community when you look at you know modifications to what they're doing in or in order to improve longevity and quality of life bodybuilding is mostly like uh, crisis management and um, persisting through side effects 